Good morning. Today we are going to be looking at similarity theorems. So you might remember from a little while ago that we looked at when triangles are congruent, what does it take for triangles to be congruent? And we said that there are a lot of different things that you could have. You could have all congruent sides. You could have a congruent side followed by a congruent angle followed by a congruent side. And we went through all of these different theorems to see like what would it take to know if they were congruent. Well, we're going to do something similar to that, only instead of wondering if triangles are congruent, we're going to check to see whether or not they are similar. And remember that when triangles are similar, what we're saying is that the sides are proportional and that just means, you know, we have like that 2 to 1 ratio or 3 to 4 ratio or something like that. And in this case, with similar figure figures, don't forget the angles are going to be congruent each time. So the angle measure will not change. And again, you can see this in pictures, and I'm, I'm not saying for sure these are similar, but they at least appear to be similar because the angles all look to be the same measure as like from this figure to this figure. So it turns out though that we don't really need to go around and measure the angles because we're going to be able to tell if they're similar based on sides for this theorem and that's the SSS similarity theorem and that says if three sides of one triangle are proportional to three sides of another then the triangles have to be similar. So let's check this out. One of the problems with using SSS is you're going to have to figure out how the things align. So what I tend to do is I look for the smallest, middle, and largest side because that way I can check if they're going to be proportional to each other because the smallest on this side should correspond to the smallest on this and medium should be corresponding to the medium side and largest to the largest. So here's my small, medium, large. And over here, I've got a small, medium, large. And you can kind of visually see it looks like those would match up anyway. So in this case, I need to check that if 10 corresponds to 12, 10 over 12, does it have the same proportion as my 15 to my 18? And does that have the same proportion as my 20 to my 24? Now don't forget, just like before, you should be looking at keeping this consistent. Like all the numbers from this triangle need to be on top or all the numbers from this triangle need to be on the bottom. You can't switch them back and forth, otherwise things will go wrong. So let's check that out. Go ahead and put those numbers in. Now if you put those numbers in, you should see that each one of these gives you a decimal value of 0.8 three repeating, well, three, three repeating. And so that means that all of these proportions are equal. If even one of them had not been, it would not have fit the SSS similarity theorem. In fact, it would have worked as a counterproof and these triangles would not have been similar, but they are. So we can write a similarity statement. And similarity statements are like the congruency statements before. So you have to watch that the points correspond correctly. So I look for positioning. I look for, in my first triangle, I can just name it anything. KML is the order I'm going to go in just because I, I feel like I got each of those points. But on this side, I need to make sure that I am matching K with the corresponding point. And it should be the point between the small and large side. So small and large side, that's going to be E. And then here, the point between the, the small and medium side will correspond with M, so that's going to be F. And last but not least, that leaves us only with this, which looks like a lowercase i for some reason, probably just cut off part of it, but we'll just go with it. So with that, I have my thing named. I have the similarity statement in between it, because don't forget that that little squiggle means similar, and I would be done. Now I'm going to skip that next problem. Instead, we're going to look at the next similarity statement. The next one's pretty simple. It's the AA similarity theorem. And that just means that if any two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles have to be similar. So instead of having to do all this work with proportions and sides, well, we know that angles can show similarity as well. 
So all you have to say is, okay, these two are similar and these two are similar, therefore the whole triangles will have to be similar. Now, if you're wondering why we don't need all of the angles to say that, well, in a way we kind of already have all of the angles with the AA similarity theorem because all three of the angles have to add up to 180, or yeah, 180. That means that if these two are the same and these two are the same, this one would have to be the same for both of these in order for both triangles to add up to 180 degrees in terms of angle measure. So that will be an easier shortcut. Just check those angle measures and you'd be good to go. And that leaves us with our final similarity condition, and that is the SAS similarity condition. If in two triangles, the ratios of two pairs of corresponding sides are equal and the included, this is an important word here, the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. So let's check out a couple different examples. First I'm going to look at this one. Keep in mind that we want two, propor two proportional sides, so like this to be proportional to this and this to be proportional to this. And actually I don't even need to set up my proportions, though I could. I can just look at this and say, well, 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times that same number 2 is 6, so these would have to be proportional. Um, and I could write out those proportions. I could say 8 over its corresponding side of 4 is equal to 6 over corresponding side of 3, both those equals 2, so that would be 2 equals 2 and it would work. Now, in order to use the SAS, I need the angle that is between the sides to be congruent, which it is. You can see the little congruency mark there. So that means that this one works, and these two would be congruent triangles, or similar triangles, not congruent. ACB would be similar to P R Q. Please watch though, if this angle had been at C or R instead of A and P, it would not have worked. Same thing with B and Q. It has to be the angle between the two proportional sides in order to prove similarity. Now don't forget that you have some hidden angles. Let's say we have this picture over here. And in this picture you can see that we have vertical angles. And don't forget that vertical angles are always going to be congruent. And we do have sides on either side of these. Here we have a 6, an 8, a 4, and a 3. Now notice that this is the, sh the longer side and the shorter side, the longer side and the shorter side. So my longer side should be proportional to each other, and my shorter side should be proportional to each other. And you might actually notice that these have the same length as over here, which is kind of nice. And this is a 2, this is a 2, so we can see that these sides are proportional, and we can see that the angle between them is proportional. So these would be similar figures. We could write our similarity statement and be good to go. And that is how you use the SAS. Okay, so where do we use these? Well, there's one situation that is the most classic example where similar triangles come in handy. And that's actually finding the height of objects using only the length of their shadow. And now this can be useful because it can be really, really hard to measure the height of an object from the ground. Yes, there are tools, but those aren't always available to us. And you can also use pictures then the length of a shadow in a picture to figure out the height of the thing casting that shadow even if you can't see that thing. There is some information that you need to know though and that is the exact time of day and we'll see why even though we don't have a time in here you can see why that's going to matter. So what we know is that a meter stick casts an 80 centimeter long shadow at this time in the desert. Okay, So you stuck it in the ground you notice that this is 80 centimeters long. And at the same time, you have this cactus that you really want to know the height of. And its shadow is 15 meters, notice meters, not centimeters, long. And you want to know how tall the cactus is. Well, first thing I need to know is if I can show that these two things are similar, I know I can set up a proportion that can tell me the relationship between the meter and the length of this cactus but I don't know that they're similar right now. What I do know is that they're both coming out of the ground at pretty much 90 degree angles. 
So if I can prove that one other angle is a similar or congruent, sorry, congruent angle, then that means that I would be able to prove that these triangles formed by the shadow are also similar. And that's where the sun comes in. So the sun is so high up there that the difference between the angle it hits here and here is so tiny, we can't even notice it. So that means that these two angles have to be similar because the sun's angle, angle comes in at the exact same measure. So that means that we have two similar or two congruent angles, which means that these two triangles have to be similar. And if these two triangles are similar, that means that their lengths have to be proportional. So if I know that this is one meter and I'm trying to find this, I can find this using a proportion. There is one thing that you have to watch out for and that is that everything is in the same unit. So I'm gonna turn 50, 15, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn 80 centimeters into meters by just dividing by 100, which gives me 0.8 meters. So here are our proportions. We know that 15 over 0.8 will be equal to our missing x over one, the height of that meter stick. Here I'm gonna cross multiply to get 15 times one, or 15 is equal to 0.8x, which when I divide by 0.8 tells me the height of my cactus, and that is that x is 15 divided by 0.8 or 18.75 meters. So yeah, you wouldn't really be able to measure that from the ground, not to mention don't really wanna lean on that cactus over there, but you can figure it out using only a shadow. Now, what I'm gonna have you guys do today, though this really isn't, Okay, never mind. <laughs> what I'm gonna have you guys do today is I'm gonna have you guys just identify whether or not these four triangles are similar or not. And I'm gonna number them real quick so that you don't actually need to print out the whole thing. And here's all I want you to do. You can go right into the comment section on the homework if you want and just comment similar, not similar, similar, not similar, similar, not similar, similar, not similar. With each one, just say, if they are similar, say AA, SSS, or SAS, whichever one tells you that they're similar. And if they're not similar, in order to explain why not, you might just say, oh, one side is not proportional, or one side is not proportional, or the angle's in the wrong spot, or I don't have enough information, or something like that. So again, just tell me either in the comment section or you can write it down and submit it with a picture like normal whether or not these are similar and why. I hope you guys have a great day. Continue on in your projects. Again, I will be on from 1 to 2 if you have any questions and available by email if you have questions outside of that time frame. If you know that you're going to need some extra help on the project, you really want to get going on this today so that tomorrow you're not caught in a panic with the last second building since it is due Friday morning at 9 a.m. Hope you guys have a great one.